Last year I made a video about how to handle field parameters in the Deneb visual. Uh, and I've since seen a suggestion by someone on a, what I thought was a really clever approach. And I wanted to share that here. And it also got me thinking about this some more um, and helped someone recently in this area too, when you have multiple fields selected in a uh, field parameter with the Deneb visual. So I wanted to show uh, an updated approach uh, from what I showed in this video previously. The suggestion I'm talking about is on the GitHub page for Deneb, um, Daniel's uh, planning to you know, come up with a way to handle uh, field parameters natively in the Deneb visual. And if I scroll down, there's this person here that gave a really uh, clever suggestion. Um, so he talked about how he used the approach for my video, uh, but then you know, came up with this way to actually modify the field parameter table, uh, which uh, solves it in a different way. I think it's a better way. Uh, so I want to show that one, but then again, I want to also show um, a new approach where it handles multiple selections from a field parameter. So from the previous video, this was the original approach. Um, it was to have a transform step in the Deneb and then have this nested if statement, uh, which gets longer with the more fields you have. And it basically would check to say, hey, is, is this category field, for example, selected or not? Um, and then if it isn't, it then looks for the next one subcategory and so on and so forth. Um, and it works, but it only works for single selection. And uh, it is a little bit um, clunky there. So this other approach was you actually don't even solve it with uh, Deneb. What you do is actually modify the, the field parameter table. And so what he came up with is if I select the slicer here, and see which um, thing I've, I've called this field parameter modified. And the way that that's modified, if I pull up the code for it, is he came up with a way of, you know, if, if, you, if you'd have a regular field parameter, it looks like this, where your you know, field names would be here, then it has the name of, and so there's, there's three terms here, or three fields in the table. Um, in the modified, what he did was actually add a fourth one put the names that you want in the slicer at the end, but then put the same name in, in this first term. And it turns out this is the field that gets passed on to Deneb. So uh, no matter which one you choose, the column name for the Deneb visual is the same and therefore it, it works. And so if I come here and you know choose different, different fields, it works great, right? So that's a great approach. If you have single select field parameters, um, definitely would recommend this approach over the, the previous way with nested ifs. Either could work. Um, but the new approach I thought of, because I was helping someone recently where they needed to do uh, multiple selections in a field parameter, was to have this concat approach. Uh, but it turns out if you reference uh, a field that isn't selected, it literally, instead of an error, it literally returns the word undefined. So I wanted to handle small multiples uh, with multiple field selections, which I'll show in the next tab. But uh, so what I did instead was just to concatenate all these uh, fields together uh, into a new field called new, new column, you could call it whatever you want. And basically just wrapping each of those fields with the replace and literally replacing the word undefined with an empty string. So if I only have one field selected, it's four empty strings and that field value three, you know, two empty strings, whatever. Uh, so, so this works well. And so basically if I go into the Denim visual, you know, you can see the, the transform step here, like I just showed in the previous. And then all I'm doing is using that new column as my Y axis encoding, right? Uh, and, it, and it works well. And we can, we can see that over in the, in the data zero view, I think. Uh, you know, the concatenation of those, the values in those fields. I just have city selected, so we're just seeing the one there, but you would see multiple there uh, if I had selected more, right? So that works uh, really well. And so if I, you know, choose a second field here, I get um, city and category, I can add color there. And depending on which field, they don't all have color. So that's why you don't see all of them there. So if I put product name, for example, uh, you would, you would see uh, all of that put together. 
and you can specify the order you want them to show up. It won't work in the order you select them. It'll always put them in the order you define here, but you can, you have some flexibility there. All right. So then the other thing I mentioned was I wanted this to work for small multiples and what as well. And so just like before, um, you can, if I go in here and edit the, the visual, Again, I can just use um, faceting to create small multiples. And so in this case, I'm just doing um, the same as before. This is all the same, except I'm faceting on that new column field. So that concatenation of all of the fields shows up as this, and I use that. And so as I make one, two, three selections, they get concatenated here with spaces. You can put whatever you want between them and effectively get a small multiple step. Uh, because if you've tried doing nested facets with Deneb, Vegalite is very challenging. Uh, it doesn't work very well. So uh, I really like this approach. It really simplifies things and, again, enables uh, small multiples with multiple field selections. Okay. So if I go back to the report, um, the behavior that this person I was helping wanted to um, avoid having performance issues with the visual as you're seeing here, when I have all these things selected, uh, when you do that, you basically get the cross join of all the fields um, selected. And so that can be a very high number of combinations. Uh, we can see here if I uh, select multiple, multiple fields here, I've got city and category. It works well. Um, if I were to deselect this, I would get literally, I think, tens of thousands of com potential combinations here, and the visual would really struggle to render. Um, so we want to put some protections on that, uh, which is what this person wanted to do. Um, so uh, recently, I made a video about using calculation groups to give default slicer behavior. You can also use it for this non-selected thing I'll show you, uh, or just in general, put some controls on how many combinations are being fed into your visual in, in this kind of situation. So if I go over to the, the modeling tab, model view, and then I look at the calculation groups, I've made uh, three calculation items. One is no, really no selection, just run the selected measure, so we won't use that. But one for the non-selected behavior, I can do an expression like this where I just say, hey, is there any selection made? Is the field parameter table uh, have any selections on it? And if there are, then go ahead and run the selected measure, otherwise return blank. And then to protect the visual, uh, and you could combine these if you wanted to, uh, here's another example where I could say, hey, I wanna keep the number of selections to reduce the number of combinations being fed into the visual to less than four. So I could count the number of fields selected, uh, check if it's less than four, and if so, uh, evaluate the measure, otherwise return blank. So the behavior we get is if I, I put the calculation group uh, as a filter on the visual. And so if I do this one, you know, is it filtered? Uh, then it checks, you know, are there selections made? But if I come here and clear the slicer, instead of my uh, visual getting tens of thousands of combinations of fields and, you know, big DAX query going off and my visual really struggling to render, uh, I get a non-selected behavior, right? Uh, and you could add some text to your, so your consumers know why they're not seeing anything. Uh, and then I have some text here for the other scenario, or if I select this again, and then choose the uh, less than four field parameters, um, then, uh, and again, this is the kind of thing you'd wanna lock it and probably hide it. Um, so your users can't change that. Um, and then if I go here and make, you know, three selections, then it works great, you know, um, state, city, and category. But if I try to add in color, it goes blank, right? So again, protecting my data set from getting too big a DAX query, protecting my visual from having too much to try to render, right? Um, so hopefully um, this revisit of, you know, doing field parameters in Deneb and this kind of thing, using calculation groups to protect your visuals, protect your capacity, uh, gives you some more tools in your toolbox to help you when you're uh, building reports. Thanks.